This short video describes some strategies for helping students to better navigate Canvas rather than simply relying on the to-do list or on the list view that they might get in the, on the dashboard in Canvas. Imagine, if you will, two students, Alice and Anne. Alice logs into Canvas and decides that it's time to work on her Hume 188 work. She logs into the site and knows that her instructor has arranged everything nicely in modules. She scrolls down and clicks on week 13, which is where the class currently is, opens the module, reads the welcome page, understands the readings that need to be done, what the assignments are, clicks next, reads about cultural hybridity, two articles, watches a lecture, looks at some examples from Drake that are referenced in the TED Talk, and then clicks next and gets to the exam. The exam question is this, based on what you have learned about cultural hybridity, to what extent is Machina, who is the main character of the novel that this class has been studying, better off at the end of the novel than she was at the beginning, and based on the same knowledge, to what extent are the communities on either side of the border better or worse off than they were at the start of the novel? She thinks to herself, wow, I can do this. I just learned all about cultural hybridity. And she loads the exam and proceeds. Now let's imagine Beth, a student in the same course. Beth logs into Canvas and sees on her to-do list. Oh. I have an exam in Human 188. I'm going to click this and take my exam because that's what to do. Gets the same material and says, I have no idea what cultural hybridity is. How would I know that? And proceeds to try to do the exam. Clearly, one student will be more successful than the other. Let's talk about some strategies then to help the students like Beth navigate Canvas in a way that will lead to her success. Let's talk about four strategies then that can either force or encourage students to work their way through your modules. Um, I'm going to work through them in order probably from best to worst options. Uh, and the first two, I'm not sure that there's a better or worse. The first option is that you can simply come into a module at the top and click on the three little dots, select edit, and then add a requirement that students must move through the requirements in sequential order or you could choose a particular assignment that they must complete, a particular requirement that they must complete before they are able to get to the exam or the assignment. And you can see over here, I have done this in my course, and if, if my student comes in and says, oh, exam to do, and clicks on it, they get a notice that there's a, a prerequisite before they can take the exam. A second option, and this is one that I really like, is to add at the top of whatever assignment it is, a note that in order to be successful on this, you need to have done the work in the module and then link to the beginning of the module. In this case, I've linked specifically to that page on cultural hybridity. The third option that we have, and I think that this one could be okay for, for short assignments or when there's not a whole lot of material. Generally, it's not one that I like. I've, I scroll down here to exam three. It's a, a test assignment that I just created. And you can see that what I've done is simply to build all of the content into the assignment itself. So students get the introduction, they get links to the resources, they get the lectures. And then at the bottom they get, here's what your assignment is, and then they do the assignment and submit it. So it's all on one page rather than in a, in a module format. I think you can see that the disadvantage of that is that there's a lot of scrolling. And when we get to the bottom, I think the actual assignment piece can get lost for students. The final option that we have, and this is one that I really dislike, uh, unless it's something that is super important, is simply to make things assignments. So you can see here, I have created an assignment called Week 13 Reading. In it, I have the, the content that my students need to read. 
And at the bottom, you can see that it's a zero point assignment and the students do not submit anything. What this does is to get the reading into their to-do list. The reason I think that's a bad idea generally is that if we all start doing that, that to-do list is going to just be overwhelmed and it will be entirely useless for students. But if, if you had material that was utterly essential once or twice in a semester, this may not be a bad idea. So I hope that those are some useful solutions for you. If you would like help with any of them, please get in touch with our Center for Teaching and Learning.